We're seeing stars recently at the Volbrecht Planetarium, and so can you. Learn more coming up. Northland's artwork is almost ready to move into its new home and find out how you can help with the big move. We'll have all of this and more on this weekly edition of 15 News. It has been more than a year since Northland Mall closed its doors. Since then, the city of Southfield has rescued some of Northland's prized possessions. With collaboration from city council, the mayor, the Southfield Public Library, and the Southfield Arts Commission, the most popular piece of art, the Boy and the Bear statue, will be able to call Southfield its permanent home. But the journey isn't over. There is still so much more to be done and Southfield needs help with the big move. We sit down with Mayor Ken Cyber to find out how everyone can help out. As everyone knows, Northland Center closed in April of 2015. And at that time, court appointed receiver was uh, going to sell off the art. This is a historic collection that uh, had many, many people had viewed over the years. It, it's always been in Southfield, it should stay in Southfield. We ended up securing the art and, and we, sh we created it up and uh, put it in uh, two city warehouses. And that's where it's sitting until this day, until we had a plan for the placement of the art. And so the art commission uh, made a number of recommendations and one of them was to take the, the bear and boy and to put it into the rotunda of the library. And it makes sense because every uh, week, thousands of people come into the Southfield Public Library. And so this is a place where this iconic uh, sculpture will be seen for generations to come. And then uh, we set about this fundraising campaign because we need to pay back the $500,000 loan. And then we need 100,000 for uh, moving the art and installing it. And so um, I, I'm glad to report that we have 300,000 already towards the $600,000 goal. And I just wanna say that um, I thank all of you for considering uh, the, this uh, project and valuing art. Um, it's only going to enhance our community. To help Free the Bear, you may donate to the Free the Bear GoFundMe page at GoFundMe.com slash Free the Bear. With your support, the boy and bear will move to the library. Your donation will establish a permanent fund for youth art programming, support local artists, and build cultural opportunities in our city. It has been a busy four months for new Southfield Mayor Kenson Cyber. Having been elected in November of last year, the former city councilman and deputy superintendent of Southfield Schools outlined his vision for the city in his first State of the City address. As he serves the remainder of the partial term that ends in November of 2017, due to former Mayor Brenda Lawrence's election to the U.S. House of Representatives, Mayor Cyber struck an optimistic tone throughout his speech as he focused on supporting city neighborhoods through programs such as Habitat for Humanity and Rebuild Together Oakland County. Another major initiative of Cyber's administration is business and economic development. Through the incorporation of a PowerPoint presentation, Cyber highlighted some of the city's business success stories. Throughout the address, Cyber focused on a team-centric approach to getting things done, a methodology he hopes will put the city on the road to being the engine that powers Oakland County for years to come. To learn more about various initiatives of the Cyber Mayoral Administration, visit cityofsouthfield.com. More exciting things are happening at Lawrence Tech as the university continues to lead the way in green infrastructure testing. LTU will be the first of several test sites in the U.S. to try out an innovative new drainage system for parking lots. The system is expected to significantly reduce stormwater runoff, a major source of water pollution. The university is partnering with Detroit's Parjana Distribution in this green technology initiative, which looks to improve water filtration and mitigation through the use of Energy Passive Groundwater Recharge Products, or EGRPs. What we're doing today is we're actually installing a pilot integrative drainage system. What happens is a lot of these uh, urban areas and uh, suburban areas have a lot of parking and those parking lots have water quality issues associated with them where water runs right off into the receiving streams with uh, water quality issues. So what we're doing is we're actually taking out right behind us here a couple parking stalls and we're excavating out that soil and we're going to backfill it with what's called haydite. 
And Hadeite is an engineered soil mixture. And then the top of that Hadeite is going to be a porous pavement product. So now the water, instead of it going into a storm drain and right into the creek, is going to go down into the ground. And then the final piece of the puzzle is called the EGRP system. EGRPs work by balancing soil moisture and facilitating water movement in soil. LTU and Parjana received a $100,000 grant from a foundation and need to raise another $300,000 to complete the pilot project, which will include similar testing initiatives in Ohio, California, Florida, and Washington, D.C. LTU's drainage system was installed in December, and the goal is to create a new national standard in stormwater design that could be used across the country. For more information, visit ltu.edu and head to the News Center. If you've ever redesigned a room, you may have noticed just how important furniture is in doing so. In fact, it is arguably the most important aspect in redesigning any room in your house. For decades, Southfield-based Gorman's Home Furnishings and Interior Design has elevated furniture decoration and design to an art form, and with a newly renovated space has positioned itself to be a major player in the regional furniture scene. In recent years, the family-owned Gorman's Home Furnishings and Interior Design Center has celebrated noted milestones, such as its 75th anniversary overall and 50 years at its Southfield location. The store recently incorporated a Bernhardt Interior Gallery, a 2,500 square foot space that features exclusive contemporary furniture pieces. The items in this space have a special design feel to them. They are collection pieces that have elements that are similar but different. It's a mixture of textures, a mixture of um, metals and fabrics, and a, a variety of design elements that complement each other but don't exactly mimic each and every piece within that grouping. And in the space, we do have several different groupings showing collections of stone and metal like we have here with beautiful, soft, uh, dressy fabrics. And then other collections that have heavier toned woods mixed with brass and um, uh, velvets and heavier textures. According to Gorman staff, customers enjoy the eclectic pieces contained in the design center. They like it all. They like it where, like, you know, you see a lot of exotic pieces. It's, uh, you know, the detail in the pieces. It's, it's more like artistic. And sometimes when you look at, like, say, a piece of art, it talks to you and it's not saying a word. And here it's the same thing. You look at the table, I mean, it's like so artistic. So, you know, the details in every piece says a lot, you know. So that's where um, the joy of the client when they're coming here. And you can see that every piece really, like you look at it, the detail, it's, it's just, they love it. The exotic in-store furniture pieces, along with friendly and knowledgeable staff, reinforces the notion that Gorman's is more than a furniture store. But rather, it is a long-standing community institution that maintains high quality while helping residents get in touch with their artistic sensibilities. If you just do a contemporary piece by itself, you feel you get tired by the time you need something. And just sometimes adding uh, a small table or, um, you know, just accent piece that has a little bit more character to it or more artistic uh, touch, you know, that makes a difference. I've been with Garments for 15 years and I could see uh, a lot of like, you know, they always want to stay up to date and they don't compromise with quality. You see like back in 2008 when the recession hit, you know, they didn't like the standard stayed the same. We didn't want to like cut on like cost to introduce like a lower end quality. Gorman's wanted to keep that, you know, elegant uh, look and quality inside out at the same time. And that's what keeps us going and that's what clientele are used to, you know, so. Maintaining a location in Southfield, a city known as the business hub of southeastern Michigan, has proven to be beneficial to the company's overall profile and impact on the community. You know, Southfield really is kind of hard, is the heart of the metropolitan community. We love being in Southfield. We moved out here when this was nothing but fields. We saw the opportunity for a growing business to aid the community that was moving this direction uh, and the consumer. It is, without a doubt, um, without this location here, I think the very essence of Gorman's would not be the same. The owner has always loved contemporary furniture. He began this store with contemporary focus and all the developments that have happened within this particular store have impacted our other locations. And um, both the owner lives very close. Um, I myself 
have been a long-time um, resident of Southfield. We've always known this. We've been very, very steady and interested in growth, just like South, Southfield itself has been interested in growth. To learn more about Gorman's Home Furnishings and Interior Design Center, as well as the Bernhardt Interior Boutique Gallery, visit gormans.com. April is Autism Awareness Month, and April 2nd was Light It Up Blue Day, an initiative that aimed to shine a bright light on autism as a growing global health priority. On that day, thousands of landmarks, schools, businesses, and homes across the globe came together by shining blue lights in honor of those affected by autism. And the city of Southfield was no exception, lighting up its main entrance in blue. Autism affects 1 in 45 children in the U.S., and 1% of the world population has autism spectrum disorder. For more information, visit AutismSpeaks.org. The Flint water crisis has dominated headlines in 2016 and become a national controversy around the country. Southfield Multimedia Services recently joined the growing number of municipalities, institutions, and civic groups who have jumped in to support Flint. Calling contributions from its departmental staff and obtaining several cases of water from an area Kroger store, Southfield Multimedia Services recently visited Flint to drop off a water donation to Catholic Charities, the designated agency in charge of accepting water donations. The overwhelming public support touched agency representatives. But when it comes to something so basic, I didn't think anything could be more basic yet than your water. I mean, that puts you down to another whole level that everything we do is around water. We all have to consume water. We all have to bathe in water. We all have to cook with water. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And to have just the, like I said, the outpouring support, the prayers that people have sent us, the thinking of you, the messages that we're getting on Facebook and Twitter and you name it, it is just amazing. People understand. I think you just put yourself in that frame of mind. What would it be like if you couldn't turn on your faucet and drink that water or use that water? So, I mean, we will have to change here in the city of Flint as to what's a normal future, but we will adjust. This community has been through a lot over the last 30 years. We've got a lot to go through, but to see partners coming together, the community coming together, we have the resilience to move forward. Catholic Charities has been receiving 4,000 cases of water on average per day. For its part, Southfield Multimedia Services donated 500 bottles of water, a gesture that touched the hearts of Catholic Charities staff. This outpouring support of people from across the country, it continues every day um, just to meet new people, new faces, and have people come and understand what we're going through here in the city of Flint. Um, we couldn't do it with all the support that we're getting from everyone. So we're very thankful today that you're here and brought water and uh, we're grateful for that. So we appreciate Southfield. So I put a call out there to thank you, thank you <laughs> to everyone. To make a monetary donation to the Flint water crisis, visit CatholicCharitiesFlint.org. To arrange and schedule a water donation drop-off, call Flint Catholic Charities at area code 810-785-6991. When is the last time you went outside to stargaze? On any given night, you can see the stars of our night sky, all 7,000 of them, right here in Southfield. We recently caught up with the staff at the Volbrecht Planetarium to learn more about the fun and educational opportunities offered by one of the city's hidden gems. Located inside Adler Elementary School, Volbrecht Planetarium is a unique place to learn more about our solar system. Its 30-foot dome projection allows visitors to see thousands of stars, including the Moon and celestial planets, such as Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. The knowledgeable staff offer a wealth of information to visitors. One of the planetarium's greatest attributes is its ability to compress time, so that over the course of just minutes, viewers can see what the night sky looks like from sunrise to sunset. It also offers a model of the solar system to scale, with the dome representing the size of the sun. You can catch a uniquely themed news show every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Shows last 90 minutes and include an interactive lecture, visual presentation, and door prize. Private shows are also available and are perfect for birthday parties and special occasions. To learn more about upcoming shows, visit the Planetarium's website at volbrechtplanetarium.com. That brings us to the end of the 15 News Weekly Edition. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube by searching for Southfield Multimedia Services. Thank you for watching and see you next week.